All right, welcome to our sound for video session. Oh, it's not a sound for video session, my mistake. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm used to doing my live streams for the sound for video session on my other channel, but today we're doing something a little different here. Um, I have received a million questions, it feels like, on connecting up the Rode Caster Pro to the ATEM Mini. And um, let's take a look at that. So that's what you're hearing right now. I'm working with the Shure SM7B and that is coming in through the Roadcaster Pro. And so my question for you out in the audience there is, how does it sound to you? So uh, go ahead and let us know in the chat over here and hopefully um, we'll get, to, you know, as a community, <laughs> we'll work some of these things out. So the Roadcaster Pro is not really made to be a mixer for uh, feeding a line level output to another device like the A10 Mini Pro to be completely fair to it. It has monitor outputs and if you turn them all the way to max, those should be line level. If, if I had to guess, I think they're actually consumer line level. And um, I'm feeding out of the two monitor outputs on the back through a cable and I'm actually gonna put the link to the cable after the show here. Um, it has two quarter inch TS um, connectors on one end, and then it has a 3.5 millimeter TRS connector on the other end. It was just an Amazon cable. I think it was it was definitely less than $20. If I remember, it was more like 10. So we'll put the link for that down below. Um, so this is exactly what we sound like. Let's go ahead and show you the Rodecaster Pro here. So I have a couple things. So I'm just coming in here on channel number one. You can see I have my fader down to five. Uh, one, two, three, four, the fifth line. I am told by Rode, I just recently contacted them and said, hey, where's Unity on this? <laughs> Turns out it's line five. Would have been nice for them to kind of mark that, but in any case, that is Unity. So we're not adding or subtracting any um, overall levels here when we're at five. If I come in here to the settings, uh, let's see. Oh, you, you also notice I'm using the Shure SM7B. So I have it set to a dynamic microphone. I have the level set to max, which happens to be 55. And then the only other thing I'm doing here on audio processing is I have the compressor set and you can see the results here. So mainly that's just gonna catch things if I laugh. For example, <laughs> you can see it attenuated some there and hopefully that didn't clip. Um, according to my meters here, it did not clip. So hopefully it didn't hurt your ears. Um, and that's basically it. Everything else is turned off and that's what we're doing. So. The important thing here, I think for a lot of people to, to remember or to understand if you didn't know this already, is that when you're interconnecting devices like the Rodecaster and an A10 Mini, and this is actually the original A10 Mini here, we have two inputs here, 3.5 millimeter inputs. They mark them as mic inputs, but they can actually be also switched to line level inputs. So coming out of the Rodecaster Pro, the monitor outputs are line level. It's important to understand the distinction between those. Microphone level is a much weaker signal. Line level is a much stronger signal. And so what we have to do is um, I've attached that, the, the cable out of the monitor outputs on the Rodecaster. You can just barely, I don't know if you can even see them at all. They're just coming out of the monitor outputs here. And those are going into the production A10 mini, which is not the one you're seeing here, <laughs> into the mic one input. And then on the control software, we have mic one set to line level because again, we're getting a line level output here. So that's the most important thing. I'm curious in the comments here, what you guys think in terms of how it sounds. I'm hearing a little bit of hiss, but I'm, but I'm monitoring right here. And I think really what that's about is, again, the Shure SM7B is a microphone that requires a ton of gain. So off, often when I'm using this with another device like a Mix Pre or with my Universal Apollo Audio, Universal Audio Apollo interface, I'll set the gain to somewhere closer to 60, maybe 61. So um, we're pushing a little harder here. So I'm getting 55 decibels of gain on the mic through the Rode Caster Pro. And then in the compressor, I'm actually adding some additional gain, which I assume is digital gain. And if I come in here to the audio processing here and take a look at it, um, let me show you the compressor. We're doing seven dB of additional makeup gain here. So that's where I think we're picking up a little bit of that hiss. Um, I don't know if you guys are hearing it on your end, but that's what I'm hearing on this end. So my uh, producer over here is, is nodding her head that yes, <laughs> she's hearing a bit of it too. So 
Um, I think that's really a, more of a limitation of the amount of gain that the Roadcaster Pro provides. So that's that's kind of the, the basic here. That's That's how we are feeding this audio here. So let's go ahead and take questions here. Yeah, so some of you are definitely conf confirming there as a hiss. Again, that's gonna be this microphone. Let me get another microphone out here real quick and see if we get those same results. Give me just one moment. I'm gonna go ahead and swing this other mic out here. We've got a kind of a tight setup, but we'll make this work. Now I'm gonna reach behind and grab another cable, one moment. All right. So we've come into channel number two here. We're gonna gain this one up. This one's a condenser. All right, we're gonna talk into this one here. Let's go maybe 20, maybe 30. Checking one, two, three, okay. Now I've switched over to the other microphone. Um, let's go ahead and show that to you here. So I'm now using this microphone right here, which is the Earthworks SR314. It's a condenser microphone. And if we come back into here, I can show you, it does have phantom power on. So this one obviously doesn't need nearly as much gain. And we do need phantom power. And then if I come over into the processing, I don't have anything on right now. So I could probably gain up even more. Let's maybe go 35, checking one, two, three. And it looks like we're peaking about minus six maybe a little bit more, so, and people are saying the hiss is gone. So that's good news. So what I what we can say from this based on these these little experiments here, that hiss is largely due to the, the amount of gain that the Shure SM7B needs and the Rodecaster Pro. It's able to provide, <laughs> whoops, sorry about the plosive there. It's able to provide most of what is needed, but not enough to, to completely eliminate that hiss. So there's a, there's a little lesson learned for us. So um, again, I'll put the link or the yeah the link for that uh, cable down below just so you can see that. Now, some other people I saw in the chat were talking about um, getting some ground, maybe a ground loop type of thing or a hum. And I think the thing you'll want to check is number one, you'll want to make sure that your cables are good. So test various cables. So here, for example, we had a comment here. I'm getting similar setup. I have a similar setup. Get line noise when I'm feeding audio out from the Rodecaster Pro to the Mini. I'm thinking it's some sort of ground loop issue. That could possibly be, you can buy um, mic level or line level isolators. And let me see, I think I have one here. In my little chaos drawer of cables. I don't have one at the ready to show you. <laughs> I don't want to waste your time looking for that. So it, it's possible that using one of those isolators, it's a, basically just a transformer, and you would plug the 3.5 millimeter end into that, and that should help eliminate some any buzz or hum or anything of that nature. So in theory, if it is in fact a ground loop. So there are lots of potential things it can be. Also make sure that your audio outputs coming from the roadcaster are not crossing or, or as far away from any power lines as possible. And what I would recommend is that actually, um, you know, de well, definitely don't run your line outs parallel to any power cables. That's almost a sure bet <laughs> for introducing some sort of buzz over the cable itself. Now, remember, this is actually an unbalanced connection here. So you don't want to use a super long cable either. That's another thing that will be important. Now, generally, you would have the roadcaster very close to the ATEM in most circumstances that I can think of. So that shouldn't be a, a big issue in a lot of cases. So let's kind of just, we're just going to make this official here and we're going to save your ears. And I'm going to stick with this microphone for now. Um, 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what other questions. Would a cloud lifter give the boost needed for the SM7B so you don't need to use as much gain? Yes, a uh, cloud lifter or a FET head would do that. There are also some other third party, uh, what typically people are now calling mic activators. So yeah, one of those would definitely help and I think probably get around that hiss issue most likely. So good question. All right, let's see what else we've got over here in the chat. If you do have a question, if you could just put at Curtis Judd and then your question after that, it'll make it a little easier for us to kind of find these here. Um, let's see here, just popping in to say, hi, how would you compare this to something like the Mix Pre 2 series from Tommy, it looks like. Hey, Tommy, it's good to hear from you. Um, well, the advantage of something, the, the nice thing about the Rodecaster Pro, and I think a, a reason that a lot of people try to use this as the front end for something like the A10 Mini, is that it has these uh, processing capabilities. So it has a compressor, um, it has a de which actually I think we, I'm feeling like we need a little bit of de right now, actually. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna go turn that on, if I can. Um, in any case, um, so it has, the, the compressor in particular, I think is a really important one and a really useful one, especially when you're live streaming. And the reason for that is that you basically get one, well, there's all, there is whatever YouTube does in terms of processing, but the nice thing about being able to use a compressor yourself is you can optimize the loudness of your, your outgoing stream without, hopefully without YouTube interfering too much. So that's the nicest thing. Now on the Mix Pre, you do have a limiter, but you don't have a compressor. And you also don't have a de -esser. You don't have the big bottom if you're into that. Um, and you don't have the, there's a RL, what's it called? An oral exciter of some sort. I'm trying to remember what it's called though. Aphex, we've got big bottom. And we've got RL exciter. So uh, those are the things that you have on the Mix, or sorry, the Rodecaster Pro that you're not gonna have on the Mix Pre. So it's a, it's a little bit of a trade-off. The, the preamps, of course, are much cleaner and can supply a, a fit, fair bit more gain on the Mix Pre. So that's the nice thing about the Mix Pre from that standpoint. If I had to choose one, ah, it's tough again, because, you know, again, the Roadcaster wasn't really made for this purpose in terms of its outputs, but it is super nice to have that compressor. So if I didn't have a compressor, I guess, in the ATEM control software, um, I would choose the Roadcaster Pro. If I did, which I do, I probably would go with the Mix Pre would be my first choice. But again, a mix pre is a bit more expensive than a roadcaster. So it's a, it's a big trade off. So, all right, let's move on to the next question here. Where do you switch the mic level to line level in the ATEM? Um, in the, if you go into the ATEM software control, in the lower left-hand corner, there's a gear, you click on that. I don't have the ability to show the screencast this right now. I'll walk you through it. So you're in the ATEM control software, you click on the gear in the lower left-hand corner, that opens up the settings. You click on the audio tab, and then you click on the general sub tab. And then down there on the analog audio inputs, you have a choice for microphone or line for each of the inputs. So that's where you switch to line level. So thanks for the question. All right, why not, or yeah, why not use the built-in processing on the ATEM? Uh, and, and actually, <laughs> Um, you beat me to it. So yeah, I probably would. So if I was using a mix pre, for example, or any other mixer that didn't have the processing, then I might use it on the ATEM control software instead. So different ways to solve the same problem. Um, I believe that they're both doing them in the digital domain. So there's no, if from that, that's an assumption. I don't know for sure on how the Rodecaster Pro is doing it, but I, my sense is that it's compressor is a digital compressor. So it's actually after the audio has been converted from analog to digital. So the ATEM is doing the same thing. So probably about the same result. Okay, thanks for the super chat there. Appreciate that. Next up, if your video capture software can capture audio separately, wouldn't you get better audio? ATEM can adjust frames for being out of sync. If the video capture software can capture audio separately, wouldn't you be wouldn't you get better audio? I'm not sure I follow that one 100%. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I follow the question. So the, yeah, are you talking about your encoding software like OBS or Ecamm Live or vMix or whatever you're running on your computer? Or are you talking about the ATEM software control? So I'm not sure if you could just clarify that. We'll, we'll take another shot at that there. 
All right. Uh, we're looking through here for more questions. Um, let's, what about Tommy's comment? It's not a comment, not a question. <laughs> LOL, you don't have a big bottom or an oral exciter if you're into that. <laughs> That's a little nod to um, to Queen, I guess. The big bottom part, at least. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the comment from Mac Tech Solutions here. If your video capture... Oh, we already looked at this one. Um, so yeah, incidentally, by the way, I am I have applied the offset in the A10 Mini. This is the first time I've used that. So my camera here is a Canon C200. That's coming out HDMI into the A10 Mini. And then my audio, of course, is going through the Rodecaster Pro, which probably has a bit of its own latency because it's doing that processing. And then that's coming analog into the A10 Mini Pro. We applied, after doing some testing, um, where we actually recorded the output. So we used the HDMI output of the A10 Mini Pro and recorded that to an Atomos recorder. I then brought that into my computer. Um, and the way we recorded, what we record is just me clapping. And so we brought that into the computer to see how far out of sync the clap was with the sound that we were getting. And where we ended up was four frames. So I had to slow the audio down by four frames in essence, and that gets it back into sync with the camera. So that is a really nice feature here on the A10 Mini Pro. A big question that's come up a lot too is, um, why, why don't we have a monitoring port on the, or a monitoring jack on the A10 Mini Pro? Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't speak for Blackmagic, so let me just be clear about that. Um, Jason, thanks for the um, super chat. I appreciate that. Um, but for whatever reason, they did not do that. I think if they, as long as they keep the same form factor, and now they're on their third iteration, third iteration of the same form factor with the A A10 Mini Pro ISO, um, I don't think there's going to be any room in there for a headphone jack, and I think that massively pushing the heat the you know the thermal envelope at this point I, I, like the amount of stuff the a10 mini pro iso is going to be doing when you're recording isolated video and audio to a, an external drive is to me it's amazing that they've been able to cram all that in there and on my a10 mini and my a10 mini pro i've never heard the fan come on except for when i do a firmware update so it's almost like it just kind of resets and it does you know the fan comes on I've never experienced that when I'm live streaming, and I'm wondering if now, when you have the, um, you know, the ISO, if you're going to start to get some more fan noise, which would be a little disappointing, to be honest, because you don't want as, any any noise in your recording environment is is potentially a problem. So, all right, Sir Judd, <laughs> why haven't you tested the Go XLR? Do you think it's it's a toy compared to the Rode? Greetings and love from a very warm Copenhagen. Um, no, I don't think it's a toy. The limitation that I have is that it's control software. Last time I checked, which was about a month ago, was Windows only. And so I, I'm working with a Mac here. So that's the main reason I haven't tested the Go XLR. It does not appear to be a toy in any fashion to me. It appears to be a really very capable piece of audio gear. It's made by a company called TC Electronic, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it is it TC Electronic? I don't remember who makes it, but the company that makes it has a history. They're, they're not, it's not a flash in the pan. They're not brand new. Um, so it's, it is a good piece of audio gear. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a Windows computer, so it's not a fit for me. It'd be great if they could also release the software for Mac as well, because that's where a lot of the, the control is done in the app itself. So, all right, thanks for that question. Sorry, if you have already covered this, isn't there a delay when using the mini jack and the a10 mini if so how do you sync it for live streaming um, we did cover that but let me just say again so the a10 mini and the mini pro and the mini pro iso now have an audio delay feature so you can get it back in sync and so um, we kind of ran through how i went about doing that just a few minutes ago but in essence what you do is you record use something to record you could use it either on your encoding software like if you're using obs or in my case, I connected an Atomos recorder to the HDMI output on the A10 Mini. Um, I recorded a clap, uh, several claps, and then I brought that recording into the computer into a video editing app, and I was able to count how many frames off the audio was from the video. Then you go back into the A10 Mini software, and under the analog input, you can apply a frame delay. And so I applied a four-frame delay here, which got us back in sync 
between our Canon C200 and the audio coming from our Rodecaster Pro. So definitely have some options there. Nice, nice set of features. Hi, how can we sync AV on A10 Mini if we send the audio from the Rodecaster directly to A10 Mini? And is there enough latency settings for that? Yes. Um, it depends on your camera more than anything because it's the camera that generally introduces more latency than audio gear. So it depends on how slow the output, the HDMI output on your camera is. So in my case here with the Canon C200 and the Rodecaster, I found that you can apply, I, I needed an, a delay of four frames and you get a range of up to eight frames. So we're only using half of its capacity. So the way you would go about testing that again is um, just fire up your A10 mini Connect your audio to the audio input of the A10 Mini. Connect your camera to the A10 Mini and record that. Use OBS, use Ecamm Live, use vMix, use whatever you use. Then take that video clip into your video editing app. And most video editing apps, you can use the right arrow to go forward one frame at a time. So go to the point where you hear the clap and then count by pressing the forward arrow or the right arrow. How many times you have to press that right arrow will tell you until you actually see the clap that's how many frames you need to apply as an offset in the ATEM software control. So hopefully that helps there. Is there a significant sound quality benefit outputting from the Rodecaster Pro or MixPre into your C200 compared to just putting it through the onboard XLRs, ignoring any um, effects benefits? Um, well, it depends on the microphone. If you're using a dynamic microphone, yeah, you, you'd be pushing the Canon C200 preamps pretty hard. And so I think then you would probably start to hear a little more hiss if you weren't using something like a mix pre. Um, Roadcaster, as we just saw earlier, is a different story. It, it, um, you'd probably need a FET head or a cloud lifter to really drive the SM7B with the Roadcaster to, to get a really clean signal. So... That's my take there. So if you have a, a good dynamic microphone, like a shotgun microphone or even something like this, then I think you could very easily run it directly to the camera if you didn't really need any effects beforehand. And if you're using the ATEM software control, you may not need any other effects. So good question. Great stream. How would you connect an external mic with phantom power with the ATEM and Rodecaster with a stream? Cheers from warm Germany. Um, so I think that would be exactly like what we're doing here. So this microphone requires phantom power. It's running into my Rodecaster Pro here. And I've got that in the second channel here. And you can see here, let's come back. We have phantom power turned on. And then from the A10, or sorry, from the Rodecaster, we're using the monitor output at full volume on the outputs right here, the quarter quarter inch outputs on the back and I'm gonna as I said before I'll put the link for this particular cable in the description after the stream here this cable then runs into the ATEM Mini Pro you set the ATEM Mini Pro to line level for that particular input in the software control and then you're basically set to go so you might need to apply a little bit more gain and in fact that's one other thing I should mention here so here's another place where we're adding gain in this signal chain and I could probably pull it back now so in the ATEM software control, I've set the gain to zero on the microphone in, or, the, or the line level input that's coming from the Rodecaster. You can see I got quieter there. And now let me bump it back up to plus six. Now there we are back up on plus six. So you can see that's another thing I had to do. What that tells me is most likely the line level outputs coming out of the Rodecaster Pro are what would be considered consumer line level. So it's a not it's not quite as strong a signal as typical professional line level, but it does work. And this is what these are the results you can expect here. So hopefully that answers your question. Oh, thanks for another super chat there from Jason. I'm trying to do what you've done. I'm using the Universal Audio line outs into the ATEM Mini. Audio is not coming through. Okay, um, Jason, the, the trick with the Universal Audio is that um, you have to use the console, the Universal Audio console app. And in the console app, you have to tell the Apollo, I'm assuming you're using Apollo or one of the other, I think they're all Apollo. Uh, universe, Universal Audio interfaces are all Apollo, I think. Anyway, um, you, you have to tell it, you have to set it up, the, the console app, so that it will send audio, you, tell it what you want to send via the line outputs. And so what I do is in the console app underneath the microphone that you're trying to send 
to the ATEM, you'll want to bump up the Q output to Unity or zero. And then over on the right hand side on the console app for the, uh, let me just pull it up and see what it says here. Actually, it won't come up because I don't have it turned on right now. Um, there's an output button. When you press the output button, then you'll tell it to send the Q mix to output number one. And then that will send the audio over to the A10 Mini. So hopefully that helps there. I know that console app is kind of a nightmare. <laughs> it's a little intimidating. And it seems like it, they made it a little bit more complex than it needed to be. But once you get that sorted out, you should be able to, to get the audio over into the A10 Mini. Again, set the A10 Mini to line level. And in that case, you won't need to bump up the gain in the A10 software control because it's true professional line level. So, all right, one second. All right, that's a nice thing about the um, roadcasters. You do have a mute button, so if you need to cough, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, Camille, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that as well. Uh, we're just looking through here to see if we have any other questions to go. Just taking a look here. Nothing at the moment. Uh, Jason said, uh, that worked. Plus one on the con console app. Crazy bad. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, excellent. So good news. Uh, thanks for that, Jason. Glad to hear that that sorted it out. So that console app, I spent um, fairly recently actually spent probably two or three hours trying to figure out the mind bending thing that that, that thing. It's just crazy what it does anyway. <laughs> so glad I got got glad we got that sorted out. All right, um, we have uh, just wanted to kind of give a. a guess a preview of what we got coming in the, up in the next little bit here. Um, we have tomorrow coming a review of a very affordable shotgun microphone, the Tackstar SGC 600. It's a $30 camera top shotgun microphone. Um, I have been accused of only covering expensive gear on my channel, so um, I can no longer be accused of that. And so <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is that that one will come out tomorrow. And then going forward, we're also going to start probably doing a few more um, live streams. Well, we'll do kind of light reviews or more, more demonstrations or overviews, I would say. So for example, one thing that a lot of people have asked about is the Godox SL150. Um, I reviewed the 120 quite some time ago. Um, but I, 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 I can't, I don't have enough time to do reviews on all that stuff, but I can do a live stream. Live stream is a little bit more straightforward because I have a very excellent producer here that can help manage the live stream. And if I do just a little bit of research ahead of time, a little bit of testing, so for example, with the Godox SL150, I can do the photometrics testing beforehand. So using my Psychonic C800, get all of that, have all of that ready to show you guys and just kind of talk about my experience with it. That's probably what we'll be doing is, is probably more live stream reviews of the less expensive gear, but then more produced uh, reviews of the higher end gear and and kind of the mid you know prosumer level gear it's not going to be a hard and fast rule we'll we'll go back and forth on both of them but um there will be some other things coming up here so okay let's go back to repair guy, repair guy dk um booth junkie and julian kraus are the best ever sound guys on youtube thank you for being you thank you very much <laughs> All right. Is there a benefit from using the Rode audio path over the C200 inputs other than the higher channel count? Well, there there are the effects, and I think that's the biggest thing really on the Rodecaster versus the C200. Um, now, if you're using an A10 Mini, well, then you have most of those effects. Not all of them. Do we have all of them? Well, you don't have the big bottom or the oral exciter, um, but you do have the compressor. You've got a noise gate if you want to use that. And... Um, You've got a low, you know, you've got an EQ. And actually, you don't have EQ on the Roadcaster. Not exactly. You have kind of more focused. I mean, the Oral Exciter is probably kind of like an EQ. The Big Bottom is probably like an, an EQ. Um, but you don't have a dedicated parametric equalizer on there. So um, I think those are probably the biggest benefits is having those processors. Um, and also having physical controls. That actually is a big thing as well. Having physical controls on a very easy to use. Um, you know, kind of mixing style uh, physical interface is pretty nice as well. So those are some of the benefits there. But 
you know, there's nothing wrong with going straight to the C200 inputs. Have you used a, have you ever used the Behringer X18 for streaming before? It looks quite a powerful audio mixer. That one I haven't. Um, I would love to. And I think a lot of the the newer Behringer, the digital mixers are actually really impressive. The things you can do with them, the routability is really impressive and flexible, and um, they look pretty nice. So some pretty cool stuff there. We'll take a look when we can. Any thoughts of Ribbon Mic for acoustic instruments and the Mix Pre 2? One second. I want to show you something. Pretty excited about this. What we have in here in front of me, Rode was very kind and sent. Uh, let's see, let's get that focused. That is the NTR, that is the ribbon microphone from Rode. And we will be taking a look at that in the next few days here. We're gonna look at it primarily from a voiceover standpoint, but as I have two musicians in the family, we will also be putting it to use and seeing how it does with instruments as well. Specifically in our case, we'll be looking at a violin and trumpet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> we can do some keyboard as well. We might do some key, yeah, we do have uh, piano and uh, keyboard as well. So in any case, yeah, we definitely, the, the, the really interesting thing about ribbon microphones is that um, at least the, the NTR and kind of the traditional ribbon format is has a different polar pattern. It's actually a figure of eight polar pattern. So it, fix, it picks up on the front and it picks up equally on the back. And so the thinking there is that you probably need to be working in a room that has some relatively good acoustical properties because you are also intentionally picking up the room as well. So now there are some ribbon microphones that have different polar patterns. Usually they'll have two different ribbons and they'll, they'll kind of um, create a, you know, either a super cardioid polar pattern or something that just picks up mainly on the front. So there are different options out there depending on the ribbon microphone you use, but the more traditional ones like this one here, the NTR, um, picks up on both the front and the back. So really excited about this one. It sounds, in my opinion, in my initial tests on vocals or just dialogue, sounds dreamy. Uh, the downside is that you're you're not going to use that in an untreated room with good results because it's going to be picking up everything on the back as well. So, all right, taking a look here. All right, for the budget conscious, can you use a Go Vocal or similar XLR to 3.5 millimeter gain block with TRRS mic adapter to feed the ATEM? Um, I'm not familiar with that particular one, but yeah, you should be able to. Um, I don't know about the, I don't know if the TRRS adapter is capable of feeding a, just a stereo 3.5 millimeter as well. So if it's adaptable, a TRRS is typically going to be made for also going into a phone. So that's one thing to keep in mind there. You'll have to just check, check on that particular one to see if it, if it can go to a regular TRS connection as well. That would be the main thing, but yeah, otherwise you should be able to do that. No problem. Okay, taking a look here to see what else we've got. Uh, there's one there from Jason. See that there at the bottom? There we go. Okay. Next challenge, monitoring the mix out of the A10 Mini. Thank you. I couldn't have done my job without... Um, without that since the lockdown. So monitoring the A10 Mini. So yeah, we did. I did start to talk about that a little bit. So there is no uh, headphone jack on the A10 Mini. So what do you do? So what I do, um, and it's mostly for my producer, what I'm listening to here is actually the Rodecaster. My producer is listening to a feed. Um, on the A10 Mini, it comes out, there's an HDMI output. That's going to a little monitor we have down here in front of me. And she has headphones jacked into that that monitor. That's what she's listening to, and that's how she monitors. The problem is it's almost impossible to do that if you're doing the show yourself, if you're the person speaking, because there is so much latency in most cases that it will drive you crazy. <laughs> and so what I did before we had Emma producing here is that 
I would just have my headphones on at the start for the first few seconds just to make sure everything's good. And then I'd come back periodically and check to make sure the audio was still good. So um, unfortunately, that's that's the best solution I've come up with yet. Um, there may be other things you can do if you're feeding the ATEMS stream into your computer. Um, some people have set up uh, things like Audio Hijack on Mac, and I think there's some other applications that are similar on Windows, where you're essentially hijacking the audio stream from an app within your computer and sending that to your headphones. So that's another option. The problem with that is, again, there's going to be latency. So no perfect solution, but um, that's what I'm doing currently. All right. Do you still need Cam Link to connect your camera, or can you use the ATEM Mini Pro? Um, you shouldn't need a Cam Link. So a Cam Link, if I'm not mistaken, is a capture card. No, the ATEM Mini Pro is a capture card and a switcher all in one. So you shouldn't need both of them. So good news, three hundred dollars will on the the ATEM Mini will get you a capture card and a switcher all in one. Uh, so you basically need a quarter-inch to eighth-inch TRS cable or adapter, e sort of. Um, <laughs> I'm actually taking um, the monitor outputs. There's a left and a right on the Rodecaster Pro, and then there's a single TRS input on the A10 Mini. So I have a cable that's two quarter-inch TS connectors on one side and a 3.5 millimeter TRS on the other. Again, I'll put the link for this cable in the description right after the live stream here. So you can see the exact one that I'm using, at least. All right. I think we got everything we needed. Um, thanks, everybody, so much for joining us. I hope you can join us again in the future as we do uh, more things. Again, we've got tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, U.S. Mountain Daylight Time. We have a new video going out on the sound, or sorry, the Techstar SGC 600 shotgun microphone, $30 camera top shotgun microphone that... I'll be curious to see if you guys think it sounds as good as the Rode Video Mic NTG and the Deity D3 Pro. So we have audio tests in there or audio samples in there for myself. Um, Emma's in there and my wife Danny is in there as well. So you can get a, a, a variety of samples from different voices and see how it sounds. And um, next week, we also have some other good stuff coming up. We have, oh, let me show you one other thing. This is cool too. Some of you may have heard the announcement here. Zoom put out a new PodTrack P4. This is a this is kind of it's like a very mini version of the Rodecaster with not all the features. <laughs> it does have four inputs, four headphone jacks, um, and uh, evidently can supply up to 70 dB of gain, which should be plenty for a Shure SM7B. So we'll be doing some tests with that to see how it sounds. Um, this comes in at $200 US. Um, that's incredibly cheap for what it can purportedly do, but we'll be putting that to the test and you should see a review on that here pretty soon. And what else do we have coming up? What else do we have coming up? Zoom course. Oh, well, yes. Um, I should mention, we do have a course coming up, uh, new over at my uh, school at school.learnlightandsound.com. We are putting together a new course on how to do live stream sound with the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini and the ATEM Mini ISO, <laughs> any of the ATEM Minis. Um, so we're going to we're going to focus entirely on the audio features of the A10 Mini series, and kind of talk about how you can optimize your audio. Use different devices. We'll probably talk about the Rodecaster, but we'll also talk about other devices as well, and all about the processing capabilities of the A10 Mini. So that'll be coming up here in the next little bit as well. All right, I think that'll do it for this week. Thanks everybody for check checking in. Excuse me, I'm getting so excited. I'm choking on my <laughs> words um we will be back with you again tomorrow morning and then again we're hoping to do more live streams where we do kind of these light reviews so thanks for coming by we'll talk to you again soon